Well, here we are, back at the big board, looking at Quatrebras. From Hexasim, it's the last Eagles series, or the Eagles of France series, or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, this is, oh look, see, I, mine came with money. Did you guys get money in yours? <laughs> uh, that's a payment from a friend who uh, we, we share purchasing and uh, even up over time as we, uh, as we do stuff, as we buy and sell games. Right, uh, Eagles of France, I think if you know uh, or have been on the blog or the video channel for a while, you've probably seen a few videos about this system. I've played Waterloo, Austerlitz uh, th several times, probably three times, maybe four. Uh, and Lingi played there just the one time and enjoyed all of them. They were okay. Didn't really get Waterloo. That was the first time I played it. Kind of got my ass handed to me. Didn't grok the system very well. Didn't enjoy the lack of maneuverability and found Waterloo yet again to be that classic set piece battle where there are very few choices other than pretty much, you know, <laughs> moving straight ahead and both of you getting your asses kicked. So uh, that was what it was. Lingi a little bit different because you've got a, uh, a very powerful French force approaching and uh, a, a highly dispersed Prussian force trying to slow down the French advance. And that has its challenges. You, you have to sort of reconsolidate the Prussian forces and then look for an opportunity to fight a fighting withdrawal, basically, uh, uh, with the French, <clears throat> who are very, very powerful. So I, I didn't really enjoy that very much. Uh, I, it was interesting, but I could find other uses of my time with that particular game. And I, I've seen other commentary around suggesting that various sides can't win. Probably tells me that it's fairly balanced. We found it to be a steamroller for the French uh, with the, they're pretty much uh, unable to lose, but that is just the two of us playing it. Uh, Austerlitz, on the other hand, uh, all I can say is it's amazing. It's an amazing, fun, interesting, suspenseful game, and it really shines. The system really shines here, particularly using the hidden movement aspects. And uh, one of the reasons why I purchased a Quattro Bar module is this is a meeting engagement, and I suspect there will be a significant amount of maneuver, I hope, in this module as well. Uh, similar to Austerlitz, which, which is now one of my favorite uh, go-to battles if I want to play something Napoleonic. I could easily see myself playing this. In fact, I'm hoping a, a friend will play me online and we'll play it uh, via Vassal. <clears throat> All right, so I've set my expectations here. So we're just going to have a look at the box. Uh, I know the system fairly well. This is not going to be a dissertation on the rules or anything like that. We're just gonna have a look at the components and kind of run it through in a sort of classic shrink rip, sans shrink rip, because that's how the French do it. So series rules clock in at a uh, 32 page section with uh, you know a couple of pages of examples and Q and A and fun stuff like that. Uh, all, all the uh, diagrams and examples and fun things. Is this the, uh, this is serious rule share. So I'm sure they've been updated from the last time. Looks like there's some designer notes and exceptions in red and blue commentary and ch changes are noted from the last time. Standard fare, beautiful color, full color, high gloss. I prefer matte as you know, and I also prefer regular paper so that if I do wish to write on the rules, I can do so. Okay, scenarios. Let's see what we got in, in, in here. Uh, okay, so right off the bat, we've got component des descriptions, the historical battle, historical battle with variable reinforcements. Now, obviously, this is all dealing with uh, DeVoe being pushed backwards and forwards by Ney and Napoleon. Ney coming onto the battlefield at the last moment. Not really with no, no staff, no uh, understanding of where his forces were, who his generals were, what was going on. 
very complicated situation for him and uh, meeting uh, Wellington, his arch rival from the Peninsula campaign. Uh, so very interesting there. Ney's early attack. All right. Wellington attacks Ney. Very nice. And campaign games. There we go. So looks like at least five, six. <laughs> it's it's Davaux, not Dio. It's Diolon, not uh, Davaux. So my apologies. And so whoever's typing their note and then comment in the video can relax now that I actually got it right. All right. It's grand campaign. Uh, I believe this is going to let us, and this is going to be interesting, let us link Waterloo, which I sold, but my buddy still owns his copy, and Lingi, and uh, put them all together. And I know I've got this sort of set farther away from you, you can't really read the pages, but uh, that's okay, it's more just for impression's sake. I'm just having a quick look through here to see if there's anything of note. Looks like we've obviously got to do some serious planning around the different modules and bits and pieces. We'll work all that out when we get into it. And then some uh, designer notes. Now, uh, what about, <laughs> you know, there's been a fair bit of commentary about the game as a, as a model of battle, right? And there's been complaints that it's either too deadly and gunfire is too powerful or not powerful enough or artillery doesn't do the job properly or whatever the case may be. I tell you what, uh, based on all of the systems I've played to date, this is by far and away the most approachable system and gives you enough flavor to make you feel happy that you're playing a true Napoleonic system. So we could stop the video right there and you can go buy this game and enjoy it and know that it's going to be mostly Napoleonic. Uh, I, obviously, I'm a huge fan of the, the Napoleonic Brigade, Napoleon's Brigade system from the old gamers company that was uh, subsumed by the beast of uh, mini MP, MMP. And big fan of that system. That takes a lot of work though, a lot of orders being written and things of that nature. I'm also a fan of the Vive Le Empereur system from Pratson Editions, another French company. And I've yet to really play too much of uh, La Bataille. I've only played a handful of turns on Talavera and was, you know, underwhelmed with the minutia. Uh, <clears throat> I believe it's being coined as the ASL of Napoleonics. Those that want to do that should do that. Anyway, what was my point? What was I saying? Um, Oh, yeah, so a lot of people complaining about the, 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 the uh, casualty rates. And, you know, you've you got you to gotta let these systems be what they are and, and just accept them for what they are. And maybe you need to change your tactics. Uh, so, I, so anyway, I enjoy this at a tactical level. It's that sort of brigade scale uh, thing. And I find it fascinating. Uh, it's way better than uh, uh, any other system that I haven't mentioned. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So here we go. Let's keep on with the terrain charts, the Malay charts, two of those for you with the fire table on the back. This is your orders chart, and this is critical for the game player. You place orders based on a number of hexes from wherever your commander is. So if your commander was here, he would count X hexes out, and that would be the range of orders that he could place. He could place an order uh, on these red dots, and that would determine uh, where the particular core would be headed, and what they, you know, what they're going to go, what what their objective is. Right? Interesting terrain here. Now it's interesting that they do cut off this uh, this wood here because uh, reinforcements come in on this side uh, for the uh, allies. And I believe that the the French cavalry, and I also did this in one of my gameplays, went around this way. And then once you get past, uh, uh, I'm trying to zoom, oh, that's funny. I'm trying to zoom on the map, that's silly. Once you get past this town or village here, it was easy for the French in this other system to accelerate very quickly up this way and then uh, equally this way towards German Corps, and then uh, uh, do a two-pronged attack onto 
uh, Quatre Bra. Uh, so, so while they cut off part of the map here, they do extend the map here. And uh, that's interesting. I'm assuming that's to allow for Diolon uh, to arrive and all that sort of fun stuff. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into that when we get going. But that's uh, your order charts there. So that's interesting look at the sort of high level look of the map. One of the nice things about this game in terms of quality components, setup charts. Now you don't have to use this. You don't have to place all the pieces out because they're all color coded. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. But here you go, all the different uh, different scenarios laid out for you in detail. Alternate Battle of uh, Bar, another another uh, another grand campaign. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of that, right? All the different cores and different pieces that are required. The early start looks like there's some die, uh, die roll uh, rolling for entry there. Just beautifully done, really well done. We don't need to go through all these. As you can see, there's a lot, a lot of stuff in the box, man. Always nice. Now, what are we on here? This is uh, setup areas. So this is gonna give you clear indication of where the different formations, so French formations, the allies set up along that line. I might have made a mistake playing a, a different system of being too spread out there. I should have focused in around here. Um, there's a quarter bar area. Uh, then you've got the Grand Campaign turn track and then the regular scenarios turn track. Uh, all very nice. Let's have a look at some counters. I'm not gonna pull them out of the box. You, you've probably seen these before. Uh, I mean, if you haven't, you can go look at one of the other videos I've done or look at someone else's shrink group. I'm not gonna, all right, I will. <laughs> Let's have a look at the Brits. I wanna see what they look like. Uh, I just don't want them to come out of the sprues. They come out very easily. So we've got Kellerman, Dion, and then we have all the different various forces, uh, for the Dutch, etc., Brits. And information markers, and Belgians. So all very nice, all very well done. There's the backs of them, right? That's their reduced side, generally speaking. Okay, we've got some maps in here and uh, the obligatory cards that are required uh, or, or needed if you want to play the the uh, with some of the optional rules. I like using the cards actually. They're kind of thin and, and light. They're probably the lowest quality aspect of the of the system. Overall, you're gonna to wanna to sleeve those if you intend on using them. Otherwise, leave them on the bottom of the box. Let them do their thing. In fact, I'm just gonna leave them there just like that. And let's, uh, let's see what uh, the maps look like. Looks like it's two map set up, and I'm assuming that these are gonna be printed on the back as well. So there'll be a scenario map here. Here we go, scenarios one, two, and three. I'll, I'll hold this up for you in a sec. So we've got, there's the French approach. Here's Quattro Bra. And that's gonna serve you for scenarios one, two, and three. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. No hex numbers, everything's done sort of by zones. So we're gonna flip this over here. Now we've got the camp, basically the campaign map. And a little extra piece, a whack on the side here, which says to me, why can't I have one on the left hand side for the, the Bosu or whatever it's called, the woods on the left here, why couldn't I have that as well? So why not? Charge me a few bucks more. So there's the campaign map. Now you would add Lingi over here, and potentially Waterloo as well, I assume, and have at it, which would be quite interesting. 
and obviously it would take up a lot of table space. I'm sure you could probably set these up on separate tables. Uh, I could probably put two, I could probably put Lingi, you know, down there and we, we, we'd fit two of them on, but I don't know that we'd get all three on there. So beautiful quality maps. I'm very, always very impressed with the, I, I like everything about it. I enjoy the fonts. I like the color scheme. I like the palette. I like the uh, artwork on it. I like the finish on the maps. Uh, it doesn't do well for photography because it's kind of shiny, got that shiny finish. But they're durable. They don't, the, the, the ink doesn't crack off immediately, which has been a problem for some other companies in the past. And uh, there you have it. So look, I, I'm not gonna spend much more time on it. We've already sunk 15 minutes into it. I'm actually gonna get this puppy to, ready uh, to play. So let's do it. Uh, although I do have some other turns I need to run on a couple other games that um, I'm trying to get uh, through as well. But we'll start at least getting this set up and have a look at the straight off the bat. We'll have a look at the campaign game and see how it all works together and uh, we'll come back with some uh, video game play of this. And if possible, I'll do some live uh, video uh, game play as well. And that way you can all critique my horrible interpretation of the rules. All the very best. Ciao.